The original strut was mounted from inside the hull with two plywood knees covered with fiberglass and polyester resin. And the sole has to be removed before I can install the new one. As I'm about to produce a substantial amount of fiberglass dust in a small environment, proper safety gear is a must. And so many hours of grinding fiberglass with an assortment of tools begins. With the strut finally removed, we can see that corrosion has taken place far beyond the edge of the hull. Next, I had to remove the remaining plywood and dress the surface properly to receive the new laminate. Once all the grinding was done, it was time to hose down the whole area to remove the dust. With the area clean, I brought the new strut up by hoisting it with a rope into the cavity left by the old one. From the inside, I mounted the strut with a three-point support jig I made out of plywood and held to the bulkhead with a pair of C-clamps and custom L-brackets. Next I wanted to course align the assembly. For this, I mounted a camera on the board of the strut, connected via Wi-Fi to my cell phone. This allowed me to adjust the strut attitude while effectively looking down the bore of the strut itself. Here we see the phone on the lower left corner of the screen as I perform the adjustment. I kept adjusting the three screws until the stern tube bore was aligned with the strut bore. This took several iterations, but eventually I got it reasonably well aligned. Once the course alignment was done, I replaced the camera with a laser and finished the alignment by watching the laser on an improvised screen on the fore end of the stern tube. Once I was satisfied with the alignment, it was time to set the strut in place. The first step was to cover the gap around its base with masking tape, so I could later fill the void with a thickened mixture of epoxy and glass.
When this was done, I prepared a mixture of epoxy, glass balloons, and milled fiber to pour in the void around the strut. With the mixture ready, it was just a matter of carefully pouring it in the void. After the epoxy cured, I removed the mounting screws and the jig, leaving the strut now supported by the newly formed block of epoxy. It was time now to verify the alignment, and uh, fortunately all looked good. Next, I needed to transfer the curvature of the bilge to the knees and then cut them to shape. For the lamination, I decided to use biaxial E-glass, as it is substantially stronger than A-glass and seems to drape better over compound curves. I started the lamination process, forming a sleeve of fiberglass around the body of the strut to encapsulate it and to assure the transfer of efforts to the knees and the laminate surrounding it. To make this easier, I sprayed some 3M glue on both the strut and the glass cloth so I could tack the first end of the ribbon to the side of the strut. After the base laminate was finished, I attached the knees with a thickened mixture of epoxy and I fitted the edges to produce a smooth transition where two surfaces met at right angles. This prevents the glass from tenting over the transition, resulting in a stronger structure. I like to apply the cloth over the filleting material while it is still wet, assuring a chemical bond between the two. In fact, for this reason, I performed the whole laminating process in a single session. Finally, I poured a mixture of thickened epoxy on the cavities left behind and in front of the strut to create an even surface, preventing the collection of water and to make cleaning easier. In the previous episode, we saw that the original alignment was a bit off and I said I could do better. Did I? After the job was finished, I remeasured the alignment and the new strut was off by about 240 arc seconds, while the old one 
was off by a bit over a thousand arc seconds, yielding a three times improvement over the factory's alignment. Stop, tell me what you're 